Good evening. My name is Dennis Mason with LaRouchePack.com. This is the uh, Friday webcast. Thank you for joining us. Uh, joining me in the studio this evening are uh, Matt Ogden and Cody Jones and, of course, Mr. LaRouche. Uh, tonight's broadcast comes on the eve of a very significant conference, which will be uh, taking place this weekend uh, in California, put on by the Schiller Institute. This is a the fifth in a series of uh, international conferences. Uh, there were two in Germany, uh, one in New York, and one in the Washington area. And this one being on the West Coast is going to be very significant. And uh, Lynn, you'll be uh, participating in that. And with discussions uh, with Mr. LaRouche last night, uh, he uh, said that, uh, in essence, tonight's presentation will be a prelude, so to speak, uh, to his participation uh, in that conference. Uh, so for this evening, we're going to go directly to the question period. Uh, Mr. LaRouche requested that a question be, uh, we start this evening with a, a question that's come in from our institutional contacts in the D.C. area. So uh, Cody Jones will be reading that off. So our first question asks, Mr. LaRouche, we would like to ask for your assessment of the European crisis. Europe is going through an economic collapse with no end in sight. There are growing indications of a global economic slowdown, with even China and other Asian nations acknowledging slower rates of economic growth in recent months. If this continues, Asian countries will likely pull back from their investments in European bonds further accelerating the European disintegration. In the aftermath of the Cyprus bail-in and the European Monetary Union's adoption of bail-in as a universal policy just in the past day, it is certain that Russia and other Eastern European countries will stay out of the European banking system. The Cyprus action was a desperate act of suicide by the Troika. You have recently highlighted the BIS and J.P. Morgan calls for even harsher austerity measures, implicitly calling for top-down dictatorial rule over all of Europe. As the Glass-Steagall fight that you have been leading gains more and more ground inside the United States, some smarter people in Europe are coming to the conclusion that Europe has no hope of survival unless Glass-Steagall bank separation is enacted there as well. How do you see the fight playing out in Europe? <clears throat> There's nothing that can be done for the world unless we get Glass-Steagall in the United States first. Europe is not qualified to handle the process of saving Europe by trying to put through a Glass-Steagall program until the United States has first put it in. Now, First of all, the Glass-Steagall was created by the United States. It's a product of uh, the, our original f Constitution. So the, and it's built into us. We, all we have to do is have a sufficient quantity of voting members of the House, you know, House uh, and so forth, and we can put that to immediately. The problem is that Europe is not qualified to independently of us, start such a program. So our job is to do it first and then let the Europeans come in later. That is, but very soon later. But they, what they need is to have, a, have that thing established in the United States. Now, there are several things going to happen. First of all, the installation of Glass-Steagall will shut down everything that's rotten in the U.S. economy. Now that is not going to be joyful entirely. Getting rid of the rotten stuff is good, it's important, it's essential. But it will not automatically give you paradise. Far from it. The United States is so much destroyed by the Bush, Bushes who have been presidents or vice presidents and similar kinds of clowns that they have done a great deal of damage since the assassination of John F. Kennedy. And they are really part of that process. So we are, we are shattered. Our young people are not qualified to run economies anymore. Maybe a handful here and there, so forth. But they're not qualified. And a similar situation exists in Europe. It's, it, it varies from country to country. China and J Japan, India and so forth are a different case on, on this side. They have greater stability 
relatively speaking, as of now, but that stability will not stand up very long if the transatlantic region collapsed. If the transatlantic region collapsed, the entire economy of Asia will go into a collapse. So therefore, what has to be done is, while we're st all working for perfectly sovereign nation states, without sovereign nation states, you cannot deal with this problem. You want to have, you know, to and from, I shake your hand on Tuesday or something, that doesn't work. Because the system is coming down. It is already rotten. And it's going to take extraordinary measures, including eliminating the green policy, to do it. Because if you run a green policy, which is a very inefficient and increasingly inefficient system, you cannot maintain this thing. So we need to go back to a high technology orientation as fast as we can. I'll give an example. One of the key things that has to be done is in, with the Glass-Steagall program is NAWAPA. Now, NAWAPA was developed well, over a period of time in the post-World War II period, and about the middle of the 1916 period, about 1916, it was ready to go. But this was a, a century, not a, an, an, a, what we have available now, which is a nuclear power driven program. With a nuclear power and a higher than just nuclear power program, we can, we can actually do things which could never have been done with NAWAPA in its old form and it can come fast. We can actually, by, because if you use nuclear power, you can recycle the water above the United States. You can recycle it more, more so rapidly through nuclear power. That's what the effect you have. And we have a, a problem we have, especially in the Western states in particular, we have a terrible problem. The water tables, the ground water tables are way down. You cannot even grow crops We've lost our herds. We've lost entire crops. We have an insane system of grains. We have people who are growing a, a grain over large areas and they can't maintain it. They're now with this thing of going back to bio, from biofuels and not that kind of nonsense is mass murderers. So, but, so we have a hard job to do, but we can do it. We can only do it on the basis of nuclear and thermonuclear power. Without nuclear and thermonuclear power, you cannot save the United States, unless you want to put call about great suffering from our people. A similar thing is true in Europe, but Europe is, is, is much weaker than we are. We are still much more, uh, we have greater strength than they do. Uh, you have the banking system, all the problems are there, but also the moral, the intellectual thing. We have, we have some degree of intellectual coherence that is lacking in the way Europe has been destroyed and, and crushed today. So th that it comes back to the thing. We, same thing. We, in the United States, have a moral responsibility to all humanity to get Glass-Steagall in now. Because nobody else can do it. That is, China is stronger than we are right now per capita in terms of stability. But that wouldn't last very long because China's productivity is based on moving industry and product into China and out of China, out of Chinese production. Well, if, you have, if Europe collapses and the United States collapses and South America will collapse, Africa is already collapsing, and then China will collapse. Japan may collapse. India will collapse. So therefore, it depends upon the United States. We in the United States have a great responsibility to institute Glass-Steagall immediately and to put it also in association with not only nuclear power, but thermonuclear power. With the, with the increase of th uh, installation of thermonuclear power, we can change the world because we can change the United States. And there are other nations which are nuclear powers can cooperate. But without nuclear power, we do not have any more the immediately present ability to even to save the United States economy or the European economy. So therefore, we have to do that. We have a moral responsibility to the world. Glass-Steagall right now. And get off this nonsense thing that we're having in terms of programs now under these kinds of things and go right straight to a nuclear thermonuclear program. 
under those conditions, with great difficulty, we can win and we can save the world. If we don't do that, as things stand now, there's very slight chance that there'll be much left of civilization in a short time. We have that responsibility. We should say something else on this because it's extremely important. The United, the United States was a, was a birth child, so to speak, of Nicholas Acosa, one of the greatest intellects in modern civilization. And what he did was he, he actually started what became the United States. He was the one who organized, while we, as long as he was alive, about, and it was about uh, four years, he died four years before Columbus began to move. But it was Columbus's instructions and guidance which directed not only Nick, uh, uh, Columbus, but other net mariners who also made experiments in the same direction, the transatlantic cross-transatlantic procedure. So we in the United States have a responsibility which is based on the fact that we, Nicholas Acosa, understood that we in Europe had to move from Europe across the waters because inside Europe the corruption left over from the Roman Empire and other kinds of systems at that time was such we couldn't couldn't work. We kept losing. Uh, repeatedly, Europe tried to free itself from the evils that it, it suffered in Europe. And they found they kept failing every time. The same old sickness came back and back and back. And Scusa said, well, what we have to do is cross the waters, build up in areas where this disease of Europe is not predominant, and use that opportunity to build up a new civilization based on new motives and new insights. That is exactly what happened. Christopher Columbo was what, Columbus was one of the people who was produced by Nicholas Acuza. And we in the United States in particular, there were experiments in other countries, South America and so forth, that didn't work out well. But we in the United States, what became the United States, from the, came, came very quickly into understanding this process. The American process, the United States, what became the United States was part of that. So that in order to deal with a problem, you can't just deal with a, some drawing board scheme. You have to have a people who inside themselves have developed a cultural impact which is capable of causing things to happen which are needed. The idea of material agreements, ingredients, that's not enough. You've got to have people who have in themselves a spirit and understanding which can move things, progress, and forward. Europe had been failure. As a matter of fact, Europe would have probably died long ago but for the United States. If you, if you look at what happened in the history of the United States, especially since the beginning of the 19th century, you see exactly how we responded. We took people from all over the world. We moved them into the United States. We increased their productivity levels by, by gen each generation. Each generation would tend to be better off than the one before. And it was built that way. The Civil War, <coughs> we, had, we had to fight. At the same time, we, we had the greatest achievement of progress you could ever imagine in that terrible war, which was called the Civil War. We in the United States have had, as a gift of Europe, typified by Nicholas of Cusa, we have had the inspiration and direction which enabled us to carry the world largely, to save Europe at a time when Europe could not save itself. Now we have gone through the same thing. The British Empire and what it represents has corrupted and destroyed the United States. That's been its mission ever since the 18th century. And now we've reached the point that if we're, we're going, civilization is going to survive. We're not going to just have to do practical things. We're going to have to do inspired th missions. And we have the potentiality. We still have older people who are now in the process of being killed, as in Michigan, for example. The population in Mexican, Michigan is being subjected to a terrible genocide right now. And you have similar conditions like that in other parts of the United States. 
we, if we do not change our policy, will not last very long. The rest of the world will go down. Europe, Central Europe and East, West, Western Europe are completely destroyed. Some nations have a fragment of something here and there, but Italy is trying to hold up. Greece is being destroyed. Other parts of Europe are being destroyed. It's not merely technology that's required, that technology is required, but driven technology, not just technology. And with the kind of drive which we still have among some people in Europe, as well as in China now, India, Russia, we have people, for sources that if they're put to work can re-inspire humanity and we can get out of the mess. But the key thing that it's all of this is what we have to do. We have to put into effect immediately Glass-Steagall in the original form that Franklin Roosevelt drafted it. Exactly, with no changes on the policy. None. The exact same thing. Without Glass-Steagall in the United States, Say your prayers. <laughs>